This is Waver Clamor Bellow. Fucking wild heard this one before. <laughs> Sage, Vernon, and Ben. Did you say anything about, um, like, the, everything is dead? Harp, guitar, viola. I'm gonna go into, like, a, some DMP stuff, but I think I'd save it first. <laughs> <laughs> The Archetype Musician Podcast. school yeah starting in like third grade and I don't I think there's just a distinction between that and when music came into my life because it was more like the athletics of music it's like forced upon you kind of right you know like I mean did you learn music while you were in school very well I started kind of privately on my own but then um, yeah went well, to the school program and my experience has been that almost all of those people that I played music with as a child none of yeah. them play music now right so I'm curious about where like what's the break there yeah you know because it took until i was you know like 18 or 19 and felt like i actually like needed music or at least needed to play music totally had you been like developing it your whole life since then or no i pretty much stopped in middle school you Mm -hmm. know when it like wasn't cool to be in orchestra or whatever (laughs) yeah um but yeah it started I mean, that was kind of the, the, the gap for me. And then it was just like, you know, something that I needed to do. Yeah. Like anything else. What, what did you need to do? Uh, well, I, you know what it was? It was playing music with other people. Yeah. Which is like communicating or, you know, Connection. communing with people. Yeah. In an, a way that I had never done before. Yeah. Yeah. How did that start? Um, you know, smoking weed and uh, losing an evening. Yeah consistently yeah so yeah uh, i was playing the mandolin around then and some keys um and i'm really grateful for a friend of mine uh, who just wanted to play music with me and would, yeah despite my aversion sometimes or like lack of confidence would just let's play music let's play music let's play music yeah so has yeah. that always been a thing for you like confidence with music is that a big issue or not anymore just then i just didn't feel like it was something that made sense, but then I felt like my sensibility kind of developed, and yeah, w- you know, it always felt like I could get to something that you know, you know, got to my heart or got to something. What did it get to? Uh, I don't know. I have, I have a big answer to that question, but I don't know how to get to it. <laughs> yeah, you it's know. more. It's like something you feel. Well, yeah, it's like you are you get a chance to like take everything that's happened all at once you know in in a kind of condensed form yeah so music is really it's like a symbolic form of your personality i hope so yeah (laughs) um but i you know i don't feel like i give it too much thought at this point i just keep trying to pick it up as much as possible the more i try to like let my intellectual mind uh you know create definition or do something it's already you know passed yeah yeah so do you think of music like did that earlier musical training make it so that you thought of music in terms of the intellectual stuff or have you kind of like gone past that intellectual stuff and i think i've kind of left it behind yeah uh the only thing that really stuck around was that i feel like i redeemed my like uh you know like a crossroad that I had in my childhood where like I l- stopped playing music disappointed my parents or whatever and then picked so there it up. was pressure on you to, to do it certainly yeah um is that because they were musicians or no just like I don't know I was a good kid yeah I, like <laughs> was I c- picked up things pretty easily so I think that 
encouraged my parents to encourage me. Yeah. You know? And, uh, but yeah, then when I picked it up in my own, like, primitive way, it kind of, like, fused, the, like, you know, healed an old wound or something. What do you mean primitive way? Like, uh, I wasn't getting lessons of any kind, you know? It was just, like, just learning instruments in a... I guess I borrow the term from, like, American primitive primitivism, mm -hmm. uh, like John Fahey or, like, other fingerstyle guitarists that are, like, you know, playing instruments in non-traditional ways. Yeah, kind of making your own style. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, on some level, it's that's a m more advanced thing for me because I think that, um, like, I, mean, I came from a pretty heavy classical background for a while, mm -hmm. and I had to, I kind of went through a similar process in that I had to reject music for sure. a bit of time and build up the intrinsic value of it yeah. in myself in order to like really feel like I it was something I was doing for myself right because ev all everything I was doing before that was just like it was just I had developed an identity that that was part of my personality but it wasn't like you know yeah for me necessarily and then right I realized that I had to do it it was like yeah that was who I was um, I completely understand yeah I, I think it sort of mirrors adolescence it's sort of like a um, it's like a microcosm of the same thing. We reject our parents, you know, it's like sure. by design. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I think it's an interesting parallel between those two things, you know, to like relive it or re-experience it in a way that's um, more benign. You know, it's not like hurting people's feelings. You know, it's just <laughs> like your relationship with sound or a, a piece of wood and metal or, you know, whatever you happen to pick up. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. great. What do you think um, it now represents you on the deeper level because of all that? Because you went back to it as your own self rather than like as what your parents wanted you to be or whatever? Yeah, I feel like I earned my bones. Yeah. 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 But, you know, it could have been anything. Right. This, this was the this was the possibility that turned out. Yeah. Yeah. Did it have to be art? Like was it did it have to be something artistic, do you think? Um, no, I spent a lot of my teenage years, uh, skating, like, yeah. doing tricks, like, really seriously, so I was really, like, focused on things that felt really visceral, um, and that's, like, an unsustainable thing, or it was an unsustainable thing for my body. Because you got hurt? Yeah, constantly. <laughs> um, so, it was just... It started to seem really, really appealing to me around the time that I was like, this is something I could grow old with, you know, right. like, and, you know, until my, I have arthritis or, you know, whatever happens yeah. to me, I get hit by a bus. Um, but yeah, it's, it seemed like something I could, like a, a way deeper pool, a way bigger container than like the stuff that I dealt with before. Yeah. Everything else felt like a young man's game or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So where did you? So you got you went from playing music as a kid, then no music, and then a friend of yours kind of roped you into yeah. the process. Uh, also a friend that I skated with that I okay. think was going through the same thing. Like, yeah. You know, I think a lot of it had to do with getting high frequently and suddenly being like, "Oh, my body hurts." I'm yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> I'm not. I mean, you're like 19 or 20, but you're not 16 anymore. Right. Like there is. There is a gap There's there. a recovery period. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So when, where did it go from there? Um, I was living in Philadelphia, playing music, n never like in a, you know, never performing, but with regularity. Yeah. And then I had enough of Philadelphia and I made it out here to Portland and um, a mutual friend of Vernon's and mine uh, introduced us and... I'd been just kind of dabbling on my own, just like a very, you know, come home from work, pick up whatever instrument was closest in my house and, you know, have yeah. had it for a while. Um, but uh, Vernon has uh, an incredible work ethic and also um, discipline, which <laughs> I, uh, I can have, but I, it's not like my default setting. Right. So... I've like latched onto that. We, he was like, you know, we gradually just decided to start playing like three times a week. You yeah. Know? So it pretty, it just kind of took off from there in terms of just like my personal commitment to it. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's awesome. It also yeah. is nice, you know, personalities are nice when they have kind of di different aspects of them. If yeah. If you have the same people with the same personality, that can create a lot of, like, tension and stuff, but it's nice. Yeah, definitely. Having variety. Yeah. <laughs> Symbiosis. Yeah. yeah. Well, awesome. Do you guys want to play one of your tunes and yeah. show us what it's at? That sounds great. Yeah.
I'm so cheerful. <laughs> that sounds very optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it sounds optimistic. But the song isn't optimistic. Well, once you say it enough times, it doesn't sound believable anymore. Right. Yeah. It takes on a whole different meaning. Yeah, totally. Yeah, like manic. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> um, so where did music enter your life? I remember sobbing at a classical music concert when I was probably six. What was the music? Uh, I think it was Vivaldi. <laughs> That's quite the thing to sob to. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, I used to put my hand over my mom's mouth when she would sing to me. Um, I started playing keyboard, piano at well, at my grandparents' house, my grandpa played a lot of ragtime piano, and we would all nice. uh, do a drum circle. My they ha my grandparents had uh, underneath the grand piano a whole pile of Native American drums, and so we would all kind of get rowdy and play the play the drums. That's awesome. And my grandpa would play ragtime, and we would dance like crazy. Yeah. So I guess that would probably be, you know, at, at holidays. Yeah. That would probably be when music first entered my life. Did music run pretty rich? For your family? Well, my dad plays a lot of blues guitar. Yeah. And my... There's a lot of... No, I wasn't... <laughs> there's not a lot. I mean, I think that my, my uncle plays guitar, my grandpa plays piano, but nobody really focused. They're amateurs. Well, I don't like that word. Why? I'm an amateur. Who is not an amateur? Well, yeah. Well, Anyone amateur means for the love of it, basically. For a, a more. Yeah. It comes from that. Yes. Well, shouldn't <laughs> it always be that way, though? Right. Well, you would hope so. <laughs> yeah, I, I would hope so. I, I don't know another way to be about then, music yeah. than in love with it. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm. Yeah, I tried a whole bunch of different instruments, but... Um, I got frustrated. I have very small hands. Mm -hmm. So playing the piano was really frustrating as a second grader. Yeah. And and then I tried to play the drums and I was terrible. Like um, kit? Yeah, I had a drum kit. Um, and then I started to sing. I started in on choir. Uh -huh. And that was, that's probably my biggest love. Because it yeah. uses every cell in your body yeah. to make the resonance. Yeah. Yeah. When, when did that start? Mm. Oh man, musical theater in middle school. Yeah, that was that was probably my first singing class. Nice. <laughs> it was awful. Um, the woman that taught the class um, performed on Broadway, and we did not see eye to eye. That's high expectations. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to, you know, sing and play, and she wanted me to sound like I was doing a Broadway play. Yeah, what's the difference? Well, you have to do a certain style and it's like all brassy and, you know, yeah. guttural and yeah. it's not, in, not, I didn't find it enjoyable. Yeah. I don't like It's very rules. much like a character that you're putting on and by yes. yourself. I don't like rules. <laughs> I don't like rules with music. Yeah. Yes. So what, is that what brought you to that old beast? Um, well, no, I started playing guitar. I, when I was 14, I got my first guitar. Yeah. And I wrote a bunch of songs. I actually recorded an album under my grandmother's name. Nice. Um, and <laughs> did that for a little while. But I. You're shaking your head. <laughs> well, it's very surreal and very much how I was when I was 19. Yeah. It sounds like a 19 year old girl who took a bunch of acid in her bedroom recording which it was yeah. what it was yeah um <laughs> but but when i was playing when i was writing those songs i realized that i arpeggiated everything and that i might as well be playing the harp so i for some reason had enough money saved up that i bought one i don't know how i did as did you have any harp icons in your life or was it well no i i knew a girl I knew a girl that played harp as watercolor paintings. Um, she, what does that mean? Well, that was her, her band name. Oh. 
<laughs> watercolor <laughs> paintings. It was just very cutesy, folksy. Okay. Um, pretty acoustic harp music. Yeah. And I saw her harp, and I was in love. I wanted one of my yeah. own. So. And now, what what inspired you to hook it up to a bunch of machines and run it through stuff? And well, when I was playing as Nadine Mooney, I wrote when I recorded the whole album by myself, and I got spoiled by being able to layer sounds. Yeah. And so I had to get a loop pedal. Um, and then by the time I had this harp going, I knew that they needed to be connected yeah. at some point. Yeah. And then this guy, Vernon, started me in on the whole yeah. pedals yeah. deal. The crazy so world. So fun. Of, yeah. So fun. I was really opposed to the idea of Nat doing things acoustic, but you can do so much with What sound. do you think that was that you were so attached to the acoustic? Um, well, I'm just Nat... I guess I'm becoming more of a fan of electronics, but I've been such a nature lover my whole life that yeah. anything that w could possibly come close to hurting or destroying nature broke my heart, and it still does, but I think I've, I just kind of put it behind me, yeah. even though I, I'm sure that I still feel like that in some places, but some of the sounds that you can make with the electronics are so next level they're so transcendent that you kind of can't it's it's an it's a new instrument that is right. i feel like it has this potential to be so profoundly spiritual and metaphysical because the subtleties that you are able to get and sustain yeah. are just otherworldly and literally i mean it, space age it feels I'm yeah. maybe I, I'm I'm old timey but something about that is it feels like part of the ascension process or whatever yeah there whatever the the spiritual gurus say we're going through at this time on planet earth now <laughs> oh no I take I always take everything to this place I need to <laughs> The, the spiritual, the transcendent, spiritual, transcendent, ascension. Why do you do that? Metaphysical. I don't know. That's just where, that's where I live. Yeah. Most of the time. Yeah. That's how you see reality. Is that's where we're going? Well, not necessarily. I think I just live there. I feel so much more interested in the subtlety of vibration than I do in most of most daily ordinary things yeah those are all vibration though too right i mean they the, are the experience but of daily life but there's something so exciting about that space in between mm -hmm. um something so exciting about space which is why i love music so much because you're altering the shape of space you're literally creating kind of a a network that pulses and it move it literally moves people's cells yeah it literally changes the way that you feel yeah. because it's moving through you and it's it's just so it's just such an amazing thing to be able to do and share with people yeah i think that's what people that also get that intrinsic like i was talking about with ben like the intrinsic value in music comes from just like the feeling that that gives you of being able to alter that and alter that in yourself too you know for like, sure but then when you get in front of other people too then it's like you're altering everything around everybody and and they're altering you too that's right that's the that's as a performer there's a kind of you need to be able to receive to a certain extent but also kind of i mean if nobody's paying attention and you're playing at a bar you still need to uphold the song's yeah. integrity right. so that can be for me that's kind of challenging because i spend so much time in that space in between well and, and ego comes into play too you're like well shit i'm in this bar and there's nobody here like i'm supposed to be playing another in front of other people or whatever well Do yeah you not get that? sometimes that's not usually the the first thought i have while i'm playing maybe afterwards i think that okay. but while i'm playing it's more why is this not 
exchange not happening. Right. Mm -hmm. So why isn't it happening when that's going on? Mm -hmm. do, do you need other people to make that happen, do you think? No, I can do it by myself alone in my room, but I'm having a feedback loop with myself and right. with whatever's there. But when there's no, when there's, when there are other entities in the room and they're not receiving, it's confusing because I'm getting something from them just by proximity. Right. Where do you think all these ideas came to you from? Uh, meditating. Do you, what do you do to meditate? I, I lay down, I close my eyes, and I have visions. Of what? Um, <laughs> all kinds of things. Shapes, lights, mm, animals. Um, most, a lot of times they're kind of like three-dimensional models of like the way that our spirit like human spirits are connected to each other or to a planetary grid of some sort or interacting with the cosmos like how usually it's how I personally or humanity as a whole is interacting with cosmic energy kind of a lot of like strings of light and you yeah. know rainbows and stuff yeah that sounds nice <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, nice. <laughs> it's my favorite yeah mm. but do you guys want to make more strings of rainbows yes for, us? for sure something yeah. I kind of think they're the same thing yeah I like that you guys talked about how especially playing live it's not always like when you're really feeling it it's not necessarily you know like they're not one and the same like yeah. getting to like the pinnacle of what you want to sound like isn't necessarily like being productive emotionally sometimes <laughs> it is yeah. and I think it's good practice to do that yeah. at the very least We never were like 
much like this is just kind of like what we do. Yeah. You know. It's the natural inclination. We talk about a lot of times like we play a, a certain we play the way that we play and it's like we almost have the inability to play any way else. Yeah. I guess but that way. We could play another way, but we just can't stand what it feels like. We just can't stand to. Like, as soon as I start to sound like something that I recognize, I stop yeah. doing that. What do you think that is that that kind of, you said, yeah, this compulsion to like reject kind of authority and like that kind of the mainstream way of thinking? Well, I mean, I'm not, I don't have that at the forefront of my mind to reject something. It's just that I want to find some edge that I've never been to before and explore it. I want to, I want to be constantly exploring new territory. Yeah. And um, sometimes, sometimes I find new territory within something familiar, but not usually if it's, only if it's taken slightly out of context. What do you mean? I, when something is familiar but taken, put in a new context, then it becomes interesting again. So I like that feeling. I do like the feeling of something familiar, something like delicious that feels like home. But I don't like. Filter it through like a different lens, kind of. Yeah, that, that can work. In. Yeah. Sickening. Yeah. <laughs> it's just abs. No, you go. No, go ahead. <laughs> Would you like the last bite of cake? <laughs> no, you. Here, I'll split it with you. <laughs> I brought you both treats from the farmer's market. <laughs> is that. Are you afraid of hurting each other's feelings, or is that just kind of like a natural. Like, does that get in the way of pushing the boundaries? Or I think we're what all you want. really sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like hypersensitive. Yeah. Which is great for playing music, actually. Totally. Um, you know, most most of the time, it's. I think a lot of what we're after is not how to play something the right way, to, but but how to play something together. Where. We don't have a drummer, and I think that's to our benefit in a way because it's really allowed us to not have none of our songs. Most of our music does not have like a strict tempo or a sure. time signature. Um, it still has a drive, though. There's still that kind of like, not necessarily yeah. like a pulse, but like an internal movement seems to exist. Right, right. What is the creation process like? How does a song get? Because it seemed you were saying that your songs, powerful. your songs are very, they're kind of set, right? There's, mm -hmm. there's very much a structure to what you're doing. We've come at it a couple of different ways. I almost feel like uh, at this point, 
every song has like its own, I mean, you know, we're running through similar things, but like, uh, every new process like yields a new song. Yes. Um, but on a, like a purely uh, like physical level, we, um, you know, somebody will have a riff and we'll expand on that or we'll just start from nothing and, you know, things will come up in a jam and try to recreate them. Yeah. Um, which is, I think, like, the thing that I've always tried to, or, like, the only way I know how to compose, really, is that, um, which is a sort of, like, terrifying thing when you take this, like, uh, innocent and kind of, like, vaguely amorphous thing and then have to, like, make decisions about it and, like, make it concrete so right. that it can be repeatable. Right. I mean, you know, that's, like, a lot of my favorite bands. I just picture them going through the same thing, you know, they, yeah. like, they get to this fucking thing and then they just have to, like, chop it down and every time you, like, chop something down, it's, like, you know, you feel, like, the, the end of some kind of opportunity. Right. But that's, like, you know, that's life. But you're kind of making the message more concise. Certainly, and clear yeah. To maybe yourself and people that are listening to it. Yeah, I think it's been good for, like, part of what feels good about it is that you don't, like, when it's before you've made any decisions about it, is that it's it feels full of possibility. Mm -hmm. It hasn't met any resistance yet, and that's why it feels beautiful. <laughs> but, you know, I mean... <laughs> then you gotta make it lose its innocence. It's like human. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like human. Right. Before you have to do anything, it's right. like perfect. Yeah. <laughs> You got other people to deal with. You have other people to deal with. You have to like decide what you want to do with yourself, with your time. Yeah. You can't just sit around and do drinking soda. You can drink soda. Hanging out at the uh, at the gas station, you know that period. Wonderland. Yeah. <laughs> Ski ball. Oh boy. <laughs> you run out of nickels fast. <laughs> I think for me what it was really about, and I, I think this kind of applies to all music or all art in particular, is I learned the origins of a certain art form and um, where, where an art form, where the origins of an art form come from kind of I feel like is are its essence and um, like so, the intention behind the people that kind of started the movement? Yes, the context. Yeah. The context for the music, um, learning the stories about the, the artists who made this music, and, um, and it, it all became very relevant, you know, within, within a context. So I kind of feel like all art and all music is just really, really absurd to me outside of its context. Huh. Like I would That's not listen to club music probably in my living room right you know i would you know maybe maybe i would make fun of club music you know um with the four on the floor but i can be downtown and i can walk past a club and there's just this energy coming out of that room and that's the context for the music so yeah and it's like in that in that element it makes sense it's not laughable it's it's yeah. serving a very very um direct purpose I suppose I don't know yeah no. um, so but I didn't connect with jazz band and I had I was starting to um, play play with my uh, my friends in high school and we started a band and I just kind of <clears throat> remembered my last day of jazz band and I or no no what happened was I was practicing with my um, my high school band and um, I had to cut practice short so I could go to jazz band, and then jazz band was just awful, and then the teacher yelled at me and everything, and I was just like, <laughs> no <that>. more. Yeah, <laughs> not going to do this anymore. Yeah. So. 
Um, so it always became, I have a really hard time um, learning covers or playing other people's uh, music. It's just like, I, I think it's, I just have no relationship to to the music. Yeah. Um, but where, whereas if I can come up with it myself and um, I can see it emerge from a personal place uh -huh. um, that... I don't know. Then I like to play it again or play it over and over again. So Right. Yeah. So the music primarily acts as a form of self-expression so that you can get yourself out in the world or I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um it's it's all of those things, you know, it's right. it's it's so much. Yes. Um can be so much. I just I, I'm interested in the process like I'm I don't know if I can necessarily do art for art's sake. I want to know the people who made it. I want to know the stories of their lives. I want to know what was behind it. What was the intention for it? Um, were they rich? Were they poor? Were they sad? Were they joyous? Um, what, what's the context for it? Yeah. And, um, and then I can celebrate that, you know, I can kind of get So for yourself, that. is that important though too? I mean, it, do you know the context? For yourself or is that too specific of a well yeah i think uh, the context for myself is just like you know like my in my entire life you know and it's and you kind of get to a certain point where you stop where you have to decide that, that you're going to do it um oh sorry i just spilled a little of my sorry. coffee um, you have to decide whether you're going to do it without the outwardly rewards. You know, if you're going to do it for, if you're going to, I think Gillian Welch has a song, we're going to do it anyway, even if it doesn't pay. Yeah. So, um, and you kind of come, I guess I came to a place where I was just going to do this, you know, yeah. and um, it doesn't. And you kind of get to just see what happens. Um, it doesn't um, sustain you financially, but it sustains you, spirit. You know, like as yeah, a person in the world, emotionally, spiritually. Yeah. I suppose. Um, <laughs> you suppose. Yeah. Um, no, and sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't do all thing, all the right. things for you that you'd like it to do. You know, it's like. Yeah. It's not. It's not the most important thing. Sure. In the world, it's just the most important thing. So <laughs> probably. So do you have those moments where it just feels kind of empty when you're playing and you're not really connecting with what you're doing, or is that a foreign thing? Like where it doesn't kind of have that resonance inside of you. Yeah, definitely. Um, and where do you go with that? I think um, we just show up. Yeah. You know, I think that's the that's the thing that like we always talk about in the band. You know, if like we're not having, if we're not particularly on that day. Sure. Um, it's just like we try not to beat ourselves up too much. Yeah. Because we just we showed up. Yeah. And if you keep showing up then you, you do have those moments and those just those blissful like mountaintop experiences and yeah. and that sometimes makes it worth it, you know. Yeah. But um, kinda when you're at it every day, you know, you gotta find ways to keep it fresh. Yeah. I suppose. It's interesting so. too, because a, a lot of those moments of emptiness seem to not be um, it, it's kind of a loss of perspective almost sometimes because it's not like it's just how you feel in the moment and it's not right, necessarily like if you right. hear a recording of the moment when you weren't feeling connected it's not doesn't always sound like you're not feeling connected you know so right. there's this cognitive dissonance that happens yeah yeah and i don't know do you get that too where it's like you think something felt really bad and then you go back and listen right is that exactly. what you're saying totally when you go back and listen to especially it, on maybe. stage that happens a lot i feel like yeah it's just like man i wasn't feeling good when i played this but this sounds 
you know, very, it's hitting me now or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think if you kind of come across that kind of experience enough, you can, you can kind of recognize it and give yourself the, suspen- the suspension to get over those humps, you right. know, those low spots. You lose the judgment, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How, how does those collaborations come about? Um, Why don't you talk about Shadow Puppets? Man. I just... I just always wanted to do Shadow Puppets. I don't know why. Um, I, I was thinking, like, our music is... I think initially I felt like our music was so visual. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very cinematic, and I, I like that about our music. For me, I thought initially it was exciting to have. Uh, I was a little bit afraid of like this, um, the obligation to be sort of like a court jester when you're performing music. Mm-hmm. You know, like you have to be entertaining, um, which doesn't really have anything to do with my personal school of playing music. Mm-hmm. You know, at least before um, performing became uh, part of the process. Yeah. Um, so I think it was actually really successful in people getting to know us, especially with the Shadow Puppets, because there's something that you can just look at. And a lot of people, I mean, it's hard to, you know, like shut down the social dynamics that are surrounding you. Yeah. And like, often when people are watching music, in their head, they're in monkey mind, you know, and they're like, I'm listening to music. I'm acting in the way that a person does when they're listening to music, right. you know. Or if they're in a bar and they're talking to people, right. listening. Yeah. But listening if you're lucky. Right. <laughs> um, I was really interested in the um, collaborative process with the dancers because um, I wanted to see how that would affect the process, like, in the room. Uh, it was Vernon and I playing together at that point, and yeah. we were pretty comfortable with, what, you know, how we would engage each other. So, like, getting another person or collection of people into the feedback loop, um, I was sort of fascinated by. I don't think we got really enough time to like really flesh that out, but I'm pretty proud of. Them. Was it improvisational or was it? No, it was totally. It was totally yeah, it was kind of like a medley of cartoons, and um, yeah, they. What do you guys kind of see as where you want to go with all this music? Iceland. <laughs> I want to tour Iceland. <laughs> you believe in elves? Yeah. I'd love to be able to uh, go places that I haven't had the opportunity to. I don't know. I'd try yeah. to. I'd be grateful for like being able to continue this in any capacity for, you know, as long as I can. Yeah. I just, I, I want, I'll, I want to be able to play the kind of music that I want to hear. <laughs> and, um, pushing for that, like I feel like the other, the other things in general will follow. Yeah. It's like if you're, if it's happening on a small level, like 
the, the hope that there's a hope there that you know have a ripple effect and it will grow up from there. And, and a powerful experience for somebody else. I mean, I've, I have my bands that I that I love, and every time I you know have an experience at a performance, it's just like makes you want to live again or just like makes you want to feel you know makes you just want to do everything yeah. and um i would love to be able to offer that to other people um but it's it's such a tall order and that's not necessarily the goal the goal is to the goal. <laughs> That's definitely the goal. You totally nailed it. Yeah. Well, it's, it's beautiful work that you guys are doing. Yeah. Thank, thank you guys you for so being much. part of this. Yeah, it was super fun. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, yeah, thanks for sitting in. Yes. Yeah. Thanks to Wave Reclaimer Bello for playing with us. Thanks to Victor Paul Nash for making the magic happen. And thank you, whoever you are, for listening.